Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the IO models that are used for the signal integrity analysis. What are IO models and what are the different type of IO models that do we have in order to do the signal integrity analysis? Being an SI engineer, you might have seen multiple type of models such as IBIS model, SPICE models that will be connected to your transmitter as well as receivers. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about these models and we are going to see what are the different categories of these models and what are the major differences and the key features. This is the table of content and in the first topic, we are going to discuss about the IC modeling. Why do we need IC modeling and what is the type of IC modeling for the transmitter as well as receiver? Then we are having two types of models. First is the behavioral model and the second is the structural models. And after that, I'm going to take you through the key features and the differences between both the models. In today's lecture, I'm going to make you understand about these type of IBIS as well as SPICE models and being an SI engineer, being a signal integrity engineer, where you are supposed to use which kind of models. So this video will give you an idea about it. So the first topic is IC modeling in signal integrity. First of all, let us understand what is IC modeling. So whenever we are having a channel that has transmitter, that has a receiver, and we do have a channel here. So in my earlier videos, I have already explained about the SNP files, like how to extract a S parameter model for a particular channel. And once the S parameter model is being generated, after getting the S parameter model, you need to put it in the channel in order to see the behavior of the channel, how the channel is behaving. And whenever you are going to use the same channel in the real world, in the PCB board, how it is going to react. So for that, we do have analysis tool. So if we talk about ADS, they have their SI Pro. And if we talk about Cadence, they have their top XP that is known as Topology Explorer. So these two are the majorly used tools. And if you talk about ANSYS, they have their HFSS. So let me explain you what is IC modeling and what why it is required. So for example, if you are having a transmitter here and you are having a receiver here, and as I explained earlier, you are having your SNP file attached here. See, SNP file attached here. Now, how this transmitter TX and RX is going to behave whenever a particular voltage of signal is being provided to it. Whenever there is a change in the state of signal from zero, zero level to one level or vice versa, how it is going to behave. That all the behavior as well as all the equalization techniques that we are going to use, those tap values will be provided in the form of dot IBIS or dot spice models. So this is known as the IC modeling. In other words, the IC model models usually provides this TX and RX their old properties. How these TX and RX are going to behave whenever there is a transmitter and receiver put together in a circuit in the real world in the PCB. This TX and RX in the simulation tool is going to behave exactly the same or there will be 99.9% .9 similarity between this TX as well as your TX IC and this RX as well as your RX IC. So that is the reason we usually do the modeling. So whenever we are analyzing the whole PCB board, whenever we are analyzing the whole channel, we'll get the behavior, we'll see bath curves, we'll see eye openings, we'll see if the TX, whatever the signal is coming from the TX has been fed directly to the RX using this SNP file using the channel. If it is provided to the receiver with a acceptable value. This is what usually the IC modeling does. So the second point is it helps us in the compatibility and feasibility study in the early design phase of the PCB board. What does that mean? So with this point, the author is explaining about the pre SI analysis, the pre SI analysis where whenever you are performing a pre SI analysis at that time, you require IC models and then you're going to create your own channel and you're going to run the simulation multiple times and with multiple iterations, you are going to get the results and you're going to provide the best case scenario as well as worst case scenario 
to your PCB design engineer so that they can design the PCB and and under the post layout analysis you are going to do the same and you are going to validate it. So this will help us in compatibility as well as feasibility studies. As I earlier mentioned the pre-SI simulations performing pre-SI simulations using model helps to understand the behavior as well as helps the SI engineer to provide the guidelines to the CAD team. Now let us see what are the type of models that we are having. So the first type of model is behavioral model. We also call it as IBIS model. So you might have already seen whenever you are doing an SI analysis or a pre or post layout analysis and you are putting the IBIS model. So this is the widely used model and the full form of IBIS is IO buffer information specification. As the name suggests, it provides the IO buffer information for each and every pin and how each and every pin in the IC is going to behave. Whenever there is a terminal which will be created across the uh, across the pins, for example, uh, let me take an example of an IC. For example, if you are having this package which has multiple pins connected to it, uh, okay, this is these are the multiple pins that are connected to the package. Now, how this pin, pin A1 and pin B1. Uh, look here. So this is pin, pin B1. How pin A1 is going to behave whenever there is a voltage given whenever the state changes from 0 to 1. How this A1 is going to behave those information those circuit related information with different values of loads and voltage is present for this IO pin. Okay, so for this IO pin every every information related to it is provided in the IBIS model. So the IBIS model file usually contains all the informations at particular voltages and current at particular voltages and current how this particular pin is going to behave and how we are how I am going to validate this these all things are validated through the data sheet. So in the data sheet it is clearly mentioned for a particular pin how much current is required and how much current need to be given for it to uh, change the state from low to high and high to low. So one of the biggest disadvantage of IB model is it does not model the power as well as ground pins. What will happen if there is no modeling of power and ground pins? So whenever there is no modeling of power and ground pins, you will not be able to see the power supply noise. So whatever the noise which is coming from the power supply, you will not be able to analyze it. And that is what is done in case of spice models, which we call as structural models. But in case of behavioral model that is IBIS, so it usually focuses on the signal strength as well as signal IO buffer uh, triggers and for each and every pin how it is going to behave in terms of signal analysis. So usually there is no information related to power and ground and it is there they are not modeled so this is one of the disadvantages and there is one more disadvantage that you are going to see in case of ibis model is you will not be able to do the pre compensation as well as equalization properly in this so in order to cope up with this issue ibis model is being added with an ami model and you might have heard in the rx side at high speed we usually use ibis ami model where AMI known as algorithmic modeling interface that will have all your information related to equalization. But if we talk only about the IBIS, which is the behavioral model, so it usually not properly model this equalization techniques. So this is all about the behavioral model and IBIS model. So the next type of models is structural models, which is also known as spice models and they are also known as transistor level models. So these structural models are directly taken from the integrated circuit netlist. So whenever we are doing a transistor level analysis at that time designing itself during the design itself, a netlist will be created and on the transistor level. So this spice model are usually taken from that netlist and they are the most accurate representation of the IO circuitries. Whenever there is a capacitor, whether an inductor or a resistor or a transistor coming into that particular cell, it is going to model each and every point of that cell with respect to time. As in the second point it is mentioned to find the current and voltage at the IO cell pad, the simulator must solve the equation for each transistor capacitor 
and resistor within the cell so it usually models as per the cell so whatever is there in the cell it is going to model it at each time point in the simulation so this will definitely give you an idea like the transistor level models or the spice models are the most accurate models so then first thing comes into our mind then why do we use behavioral models if the structural spice models are too much accurate and the accuracy is high then why do we go for the ibis models so the only disadvantage that you are going to get in case of uh, in case of structural model is is that they are time consuming so whenever you are running a spice model along with the circuit your simulation may take a lot of time but your result will be accurate but in case of behavioral model so sometimes it happens you don't have that much of time in order to run the simulation and your signal is not that critical but still you want to get an idea of if it is passing the i bit error rate i opening is proper and your channel is running perfectly fine so in that case you usually go for the behavioral model where you compromise on accuracy but time taken by the simulation is very less but whenever we you need a very highly accurate result and you there is no time bound and and you you have to get an accurate result in that case you are going to use the transistor spice level models and usually what happens whenever so for example this is one of these cells these are this is how the cells are connected in the transistor model model and there is one transistor here even though one cell can contain millions of uh, millions of transistors okay so what what usually the simulator does it will go to each and every transistor it will go to each and every transistor and it is going to simulate it at each point of time so this process usually takes a lot of time so this is the reason why behavioral models ibis models are majorly used in the industry so let me take you through the key features and the differences between these type of models as in my earlier slides i have already explained few of the advantages as well as disadvantages for both behavioral models and the structural or the transistor level models now let me take you through a tabulation where i am going to explain you how these models are being used and how these models are different from each other so the first point says simulation time is less and simulation time is much more as i have already explained the simulation time is less in case of behavioral models and in case of transistor level models it is very high it is because for each and every transistor it is going to run the simulation but the accuracy is high as the second point states accuracy is less than structural models accuracy is very high so in case of structural uh, models the accuracy is pretty high but in case of behavioral models the accuracy is zero the third point is easily available as they are available with multiple vendors and for the structural model it's hard to procure as they are proprietary compl compliances let me explain you this point so in case of ibis model ibis model usually contains only the pin related informations like the io io buffer informations for all the pins right and it does not contain the power and ground level related information also so this information can be tested by multiple vendors and it can be proactivated by multiple vendors See, they can provide you like for example if you are having a chip from micron so you can get it from micron easily okay but in case of structural models they are hard to procure as they are proprietary compliances so what does that mean so the the major difference that ibis as well as spice model is the ibis models are non encrypted models non encrypted models and spice models are encrypted models so until and unless you break their encryption you won't be able to use these spice models so for that they have their proprietary compliances because it contains all the transistor level information of the design and which is very critical in many cases so that is the reason it's pretty hard until unless you have your non disclosure agreements and everything in place with the particular uh, particular vendor you won't be able to get it but if we talk about uh, behavioral model you will easily get it because it only contains the pin level information okay and the last point is power noise cannot be models as i earlier mentioned so in case of behavioral model the power the power as well as the ground pins are not modeled so if that is not modeled then the power supply noise cannot be found 
and if the power supply noises cannot be found then only uh, then that means behavioral model only focuses on the signal as well as pin strength it doesn't focus on the on the power as well as ground pin related informations but in case of structural model power noise can be modeled easily why is it so because as i explained earlier each and every transistor as well as each and every property will be modeled and that makes it very slow as compared to the behavioral model and maybe that is the reason it is the most accurate model in the market so that's all from this short tutorial where we have seen what are the type of models that we are using we have seen something about ibis we have seen something about spice spice models now you have an idea where to use the IBIS model and SPICE model and you will get more idea about it. If you have any question related to this particular topic, please drop down your comments below. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we are new to the market. And if you are looking for any signal integrity as well as power integrity courses, we have our batches starting this month and from 25th of January, we have our batches starting. So you can always enroll, you can mail me or you can put down your comments and I will surely reply on top of them and we can have a discussion. So thank you. Thank you for giving your precious time to this video. Thank you and have a nice day.